Hello and welcome to another Whisk em Up Wednesday, where I pull from the depths of the internet with all of my muscle. Viral TikToks that pissed people off so you don't have to scroll through your phone and rot and mush and ruin your precious brain. And the only thing I want, the only thing I ask for you is for you to just hit the subscribe button so I can get to my goal of 900,000 subscribers. I'm so close, I can almost taste it. You guys, we have a lot today. We've got a fat girl who wants to just be fat in peace. Why does everything need to be labeled and prefaced with the fact that I'm plus size? Bethany Frankel gets treated like a poor person and she's very upset about it. Am I not allowed to come in at 3.54 on a Tuesday? Evidently not. Some man walked up to a woman and said, you would look pretty good if you lost about 20 more pounds. You just need to do some cardio. A principal gets exposed for bullying a student. If this shows up on social media, yeah, we're gonna have a real big problem. It did, and we thank you so much, sir, because without you, we wouldn't have a show. Get your snack, strap down your boobs, ladies and men, because taking an eye out with your chest is all inclusive. Are y'all ready, kids? Let's get into some Whisk em Up Wednesday. <laughs> So going up to people in the gym and giving advice that they never asked for, everyone absolutely loves that. And I know that ladies absolutely love when a guy comes up to them in the gym and says, you know, all you gotta do is lose about 20 more pounds, then you'll be really attractive. Well, that would happen to someone named Dolly Blondie who is a personal trainer, experienced lifter, and someone who lost a substantial amount of weight. 90 pounds to be exact. You got some size to you. Stop though, just a thing. I've worked in gyms before, this does not frequently happen, okay? Anyone that's scared to go to a gym, but when it does, you know what they look like. And when he slid up and mumbled, you got some size to you. In the most awkward way that you could, I can already tell his physical features. She didn't even show the man. I just know what he looks like. I know he's one of those guys that used to bench press 500 pounds and that he's socially awkward, but he's not awkward enough to not come up to her and say this. Yeah, I put on good muscle mass over this last year. You just need to do some cardio. So now many of the comments are saying, that's just the truth. He's just telling the truth. Women are so sensitive. Men talk like this to men all the time. Bitch. I have gone to the gym since I was 16, 17 years old, okay? I have rarely ever seen a man shuffle up to another man, minding his own damn business and saying, you gotta do some cardio. You gotta lose 20 pounds. But I have seen it one time and the man looked exactly like she did because that's just weird to go up to someone and say. What I do see a lot of men doing to other men is like older men going up to the younger men telling them how much they used to bench press and the face still looks like this. Once again, just very awkward. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah, that's what Maybe I've been doing. Like 20 pounds. I'm gonna try and do a bodybuilding, actually I'm gonna do a bodybuilding show in October. Yeah, 20 pounds would be fair, but. I must be waiting right now. Sir, are you about to train me? Like, are you my trainer? Why do you need to know all of these things about me, you random human? Can we have a quick check? Does she have earphones in? Oh my God, she does. Gym etiquette 101. You see someone with earphones in their ears, and if you have to go up to them, at least make it worth their while. And I swear to Sky Daddy himself, you hear me up there, Sky Daddy? If I get comments saying, you can't go up to anyone anymore, I'm gonna find you. This is a threat. I'm gonna find you minding your own damn business and I'm gonna shuffle up to you. Lean in super close to your ear and say, I can almost taste it. No, not that. I'm gonna say, you just need to lose 20 pounds. And my breath that probably smells like hot Cheetos is gonna caress the side of your ear and you're gonna probably be very dumbfounded by that and irritated and then put it on TikTok and cancel me. So do not come up here and tell me, this is just normal talk. That's not normal in a gym. So coming from someone who's at the gym all the time, it's weird, it's socially awkward, it's not normal. This woman is better than me. I'm not weird about my weight. If people ask me how much I weigh, it doesn't matter to me. But this, I don't personally even mind people coming up to me at the gym. As long as they understand social cues, you know, if I go up to someone at the gym and I compliment them and they give me a quick thank you and then turn away and go back to their workout, to me that's saying, okay, they're busy. They don't want to initiate this conversation anymore. And that happens all the time as I go up to people all the time in the gym or wherever else. If I see them doing something really cool or doing a good job or if I like the color of their toe, I will tell them, they say thank you you and if
if they're giving me the cue that I don't want to talk to you, I can see that. So I leave. But this guy isn't getting it. Throughout the whole video, she is giving body language that she does not want to continue this conversation, which is why I think it's important to tell people, please leave me alone or just ignore them. And this guy got very lucky because besides the odd comments calling her a baby for some reason and that she's rude and she interacted very rudely, I watched the whole thing. She handled this very nicely. You look like 180. Yeah. 24 pounds. Yeah. That's doable, dude. That's doable, yeah. You just need to be in a deficit. Really? Is that how you lose weight? Well, you know, obviously, yeah. You know, you gotta eat less than what you're burning and shit. Really? After the first me trying to shift into my shoulder press, I would have said, THANK YOU! Sir, very loudly, because you know you can't hear through earphones, and hop right into my shoulder press that she's been trying to do for about two minutes. So I was reading the comments from women saying, this is why I never go to the gym, because of the whole mansplaining thing. And I was reading the comments from the men saying, this is why I never go up to women in the gym, because it's gonna turn out like this. First of all, once again, she was nice. Second, ladies, this, this rarely ever happens. Like I said, I've seen it happen to a guy once, it happened to one of my fit friends who you can visibly see her muscle another time. And I think it's because the guy liked her and that's his awkward way of trying to assess dominance or whatever. This doesn't seem like a man versus woman type of thing. This seems like a socially awkward gym dude who doesn't know how to talk to probably anyone. Next. <laughs> You guys, this is frightening. Cicadas are taking over parts of the US. Hundreds of trillions or even quad trillions emerging from the ground. If you do the math, that's an average of 1 million bugs per acre. And I have to put this in here because I hate summer. You guys already know I hate summer from my second channel. And there's always one cicada that comes around my house every single summer at exactly 1 p.m. And my dogs are taking their sweet time outside. And you know what? Even though I hate it every year, watching this story, I should not complain. Another day walking into work seeing this. And I absolutely would be losing my job that day because I'm not coming into work, you can't make me, until they all go away. There are two broods of periodical cicadas that will emerge at the same time. We have the 17-year cicadas and the 13-year cicadas. Michael Ropp, an entomologist at the University of Maryland, says the last time this happened was 1803. So this has gotten so bad that people on TikTok are calling this the cicada get in. No, these cicadas! Have invaded. It's like an entire alien species living underneath our feet. I'm disgusted even reporting on this, but the largest emergence of bugs, we're talking cicadas in centuries, is literally about to happen. People are getting swarmed as they do yard work. The construction workers, oh my God, the poor construction workers, all on his shirt. This man is covered and it makes my skin crawl. My ass it. You guys, they are on his face. But no one is taking it worse than a woman who went viral. She has stolen many a hearts, even mine, and her name is Morgan. <laughs> You might think that this woman is playing it up for TikTok, but you guys, this is me. I will cry. Flying bugs, I have so many stories of me looking like a stupid idiot. People think I'm so tough because I have, mo no, you put a moth in front of me and I will crumble. Monster. <laughs> and people think it's the funniest thing. It is a legit fear of mine and people think it's so funny to play with me. But don't worry, Megan found a solution. <laughs> This is my ass. This is my whole ass. Garrett had to leave for a month to help his sister and that bastard, that bastard left me for a whole month, middle of summer. You know what comes out at night during summer? During those warm summer nights? Large ass moths who want to flutter their wings in my face. And I have three small dogs that like to sniff every blade of grass outside. Y'all, that gray one I told you that was by the window fell to the fucking ground and now I cannot go outside this way. We gotta go out the bed. So every night I had to cover my whole body. I had to put gloves on my hands, shower cap over my head with a hood, and the only thing you could see is my face. And you can bet your ass I was looking for bee suit. Are you hunting for honey? <laughs> Principles. I think 
unfortunately, in almost every show as I was growing up, they were always portrayed as horrible. Principal Warts is one of the first ones that come to my mind. And this principal we're talking about in this section is not helping the stereotype. Okay. If, if this shows up on social media, we're gonna have real big problems. Well, it did. It even got on the news, actually. That's our top story tonight at 10. So what exactly happened? I'm gonna explain it to you. So the dad is actually the one that's recording this meeting because his daughter comes home and says that she got sentenced to ISS and then an hour later, OSS. I don't know what those two things are, but I'm taking it. It's like some type of bad thing with the school. But then an hour after that, she got suspended and sent to an alternative school for the bad kids with no hearing, meeting, proof that she was high. Well, at first they said she was gonna be ISS. Then they called me back, said I needed, uh, she needed to be out of school suspension. Then they called me back again, saw on the same day said that she was gonna have to go to an alternative school. Well, it turns out she was not high. She just had allergies. Mike Bartle's daughter suffers from severe allergies. And late last month, she had an allergic reaction on a Saturday causing her eyes to swell, and by Monday, her eyes were still red. But for some reason, the principal and her teacher was said that she was pretty much Jaggy from Scooby-Doo. And the dad said, absolutely not, sir. My daughter would never. So he got a drug test from CVS and got the daughter to take it, and she came out clean. I got you there for a second, didn't I? Anyway, this wasn't good enough for the principal. The principal informs him and says, no, I don't like this drug test. I know that your daughter's been smoking it up. She needs an official test or I won't believe her. She passed the drug test. They said that that drug test didn't work, that I would have to go get another one. So I went to doctor's office, got her another drug test and um, had to wait four days for the results. In the meantime, I took her back to school. They called me, said she can't be at school. So the dad took her to the doctor's office to get tested and she was clear. And pretty much this is the meeting that they had after all of this. Are you threatening me, Mr. Boss? No, I'm just saying. This is, I'm trying my best to help you, sir. You, you're targeting my daughter and you're, you're proving Absolutely it, you're not. proving it. I had, I walked into Miss Chapman's room to say hello to my teacher and I was proud of her, uh, proud of her for, for showing up to an event. Okay. She let me know what happened, what she noticed. Yes. Because she's your teacher and she knows you. If they thought she was doing drugs, why didn't they search her bag? She knows she thought you weren't acting yourself. Don't worry, everybody. He apologized with a mouthful of gum and his hands on his hips. I, I feel I don't I don't think we did the wrong thing. We were just trying to do our best and trying to get to the bottom of it, okay? Wow. Yeah, everybody stand up. This because he seems like a stand-up guy. Everybody was really upset about that one. So this just in Bethany Frankel, everybody, treated like she's not rich. <laughs> So I'm in Chicago and the man at the Chanel store opens the door like this much, like Ratatouille couldn't fit in there. And he's like, hello, do you have an appointment? Like, he's like Lurch in the Adams family, like you rang. And I'm already on the offensive and I'm like, no, I don't have an appointment. I have a credit card, I have a bag of carrots, popcorn, a basic bitch purse. Am I not allowed to come in at 3.54 on a Tuesday? Evidently not. Well, you don't have an appointment, so Lurch from the Adams family was correct. He asked a question, you gave him the answer, and uh, that's why you can't go in, Bethany. I don't have an appointment, and I, I, to be like, treated like you're an interloper. Like that's what you were though. Someone who becomes involved in an activity or a social group without being asked or enters a place without permission. You get the permission, Bethany, and he will open the doors wider so all of Ratatouille's family members and you can slide your carrots and your credit cards in. I'm just walking down the street, just opening up a door to just walk into a store. I thought that's what happened. Like, I didn't realize that we're not allowed to walk into stores anymore. I don't have an appointment. My favorite part is how she keeps saying the reason she didn't get to go in to this high profile store that goes by appointment apparently, but for some reason it's not going through her head all while she's thinking that the majority of the people watching this will somehow relate to this really big issue. Most of us shop at Ross and Walmart, Bethany. Gotta get a pap smear appointment and also to go walk in Chanel. No big deal. I think you'll live. I think she'll be okay. Just make an appointment and Lurch will let you in. <laughs> So are some of my bigger, squishier girlies tired of doing things wow fat and people calling you motivating or wow, you're amazing? Well, one person is on TikTok and she thinks the body positivity movement has gone too far with it. So I fear we may have lost the plot on the body positive movement because I got a DM 
on Instagram in response to one of my wedding photos and it said, I love seeing big girl joy. Why does everything need to be labeled and prefaced with the fact that I'm plus size? Big girl joy on my wedding day. No, 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 sweetie, you are just out of touch because the women we talk about on this channel in the body positive movement think that everything big girls do should be celebrated. Eating three McDonald's burgers, even though McDonald's prices are out of control, amazing. Walking down the street in a bathing suit, heart stopping. Sitting on your couch, watching TV, blissfully amazing. I just simply got married, babe. I simply put on my fat girl dress. Astonishing. I walked down my fat girl aisle. Unbelievable. And married my husband in front of my fat girl friends and family. And babe, you just made history. No one's ever done this before. Anyway, I kind of understand what she's talking about, but from a black standpoint, because when I was just minding my own business, one day at the gym, this woman comes up to me and she goes, wow. I love seeing strong, beautiful black women just being so strong and just out here doing their thing. I was eating tortilla chip behind the training desk. <laughs> Even at my young age, I was kind of confused by that, but that's what she did. Was it nice? Yes, but was it weird? Also, yes. Anyway, I don't want to let you go yet. I love your cute little butt cheeks or big, down for those two. Let's do a bonus clip because I am convinced that this dog is actually an old man with a favorite chair who morphed into a dog so that he could be left alone. Yeah, nobody understands. This is 24 hours a day. Right, I know. This is not like a moment in time. This I know. Is every day. I know. For 24 hours, and guarantee you will see him at the chair throughout the day just doing yeah, his no yeah ladies if you do not let that elderly man just sit peacefully in his favorite chair in peace ladies come on well you guys this is the end of our journey i know i know it's it's a sad you guys love being here and i love when you come over here last week one of the ultimate fat acceptance warriors got hit with a dose of reality and baby i was sipping it happily i linked that down below thank you so much for being here but i will see you guys next time and also don't forget to hit the subscribe button because one hit to the subscribe button gets you a kiss on those beautiful butt cheeks. And who doesn't want that? So just click it. There you go. Bring that booty over here because I have to. Bye. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. I don't have an appointment. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drippy, I'm fitted up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. I've been on the flex since flex zone. Neighborhood all in your eardrum.